Imagine if you're one of the last men on Earth, tasked with repopulating the planet. Sounds like a fantasy, doesn't it? Well, not for Reito. This young man from Tokyo in 2040, an era of advanced science and technology, had his heart set on his childhood sweetheart, Elisa. However, destiny had other plans. Reito was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, a condition that could only be treated by putting him into a five-year cryogenic sleep. Before entering this deep freeze, he decided to express his feelings to Elisa, hoping she would wait for him. But his timid confession left Elisa wanting more passion and assertiveness. Aware that another man, Mana, was also in love with her, Elisa felt conflicted and distanced herself from Reito. With a heavy heart, Reito proceeded to the hospital with his siblings, Mahiru and Ryu, to prepare for his cryogenic sleep. As he was about to enter the chamber, Elisa appeared, apologized, and promised to wait for him, accepting his pendant as a symbol of their love. Reito entered his long sleep with a smile, comforted by Elisa's words. When Reito awoke five years later, he was greeted by a woman who bore a striking resemblance to Elisa. She informed him that his treatment was successful and he was now healthy. She introduced herself as Mira, his personal assistant, and assured him that she would manage all his external communications. Reito was puzzled by her behavior and asked for an explanation. That's when Mira revealed the shocking truth. While Reito was in cryogenic sleep, a lethal virus known as the MK virus had decimated half the world's population. The virus, which was airborne and incurable, targeted only men. Reito couldn't believe his ears. He bolted out the car like a rocket. Gotta see this for himself. Dude, the city looked like a war zone, buildings all busted up, like somebody took a wrecking ball to them. And not a single dude in sight, only chicks. They stared at him like he was a Martian or something. Mira caught up, panting faster than a greyhound, and dropped some real heavy knowledge. MK stands for male killer, wiped out 99% of the guys. The rest are chilling in cryosleep, waiting for a cure. Reito's jaw hit the floor. He was one of the five dudes on Earth immune to the bug. Mira then hit him with another bomb. He gotta impregnate as many ladies as possible, like save humanity and all that. Off to this mating center they went, where Reito watched a flick that explained the New World Order. Turns out, a group called United Women run the show, stopped all the fighting, and focused on finding an MK vaccine. Reito's brain felt like it was gonna explode. Babies with strangers? Forget that. He wanted his normal life back, and especially Elisa, his crush. He begged Mira if there was another way, but nope, nada. Apparently, only natural babies make strong, virus-proof boys. Not convinced, Reito asked to go home, but Mira shut that down quick. His safety was top priority, even if it meant playing stud muffin. She dumped a tablet on him with a bunch of ladies to choose from, but Reito wouldn't budge. Treating women like toys? Not his style. Suddenly, his sister Mahiru walks in, grinning like a Cheshire cat. Reito hadn't seen her in ages, and guess what? His older bro, Ryu, was still chilling in cryo sleep. Relief washed over him, but the question that wouldn't quit popped up. What about Elisa? Mahiru shrugged, said she hadn't seen her in ages, vanished three years back. That night, Mira shows up in his room, looking like a queen in a nighty. She wanted to, well, make him a daddy. Reito shut that down faster than a cop car siren. He felt bad for everyone suffering. But betraying Elisa? No way. Mira left, dejected and frustrated. Reito couldn't stop thinking about Elisa. He remembered that pen he gave her, the one with the secret transmitter. And guess what? It was still sending signals. Maybe, just maybe, she was still out there. The next day, Mira had a surprise. A room full of ladies, all eyes on Reito, like he was a five-star buffet. Turns out, in this new world, five dudes got to carry the weight of five billion chicks. But Reito wasn't having it. I ain't no prize chicken, he roared. Mira realized she messed up, apologized, but stressed the baby-making urgency. Then, another bombshell. Those dudes in cryosleep, including Ryu, had a year before the virus got them. Cold sleep was just a snooze button. Deep in thought, Reito made a decision. He asked Mira for one month to find Elisa, because if he was gonna make babies, it was gonna be with her and her alone. Mira, seeing his determination, agreed to his request. 
The next day, there's this dude named Kyoji, who's living the good life, chilling and watching a dope movie. He gets a massage from two fine ladies and guess what? The actress he was digging from the flick shows up in the dining room. Mira comes over to my boy Reito with an offer. She wants him to have a bodyguard and nurse for his protection. But here's the kicker. He got to share a bed with them as part of some test to see if he can keep it together. As Reito heads back to his room, he bumps into Kyoji, who turns out to be number one survivor or whatever. They start chatting it up and become friends real quick. Kyoji tells Reito that they should fully embrace this crazy world they're stuck in, go all out and make the most of it. Later on, while Reito is taking a shower to freshen up, bam! The lights go out and lo and behold, some drunk chick joins him in there. Turns out, she was his personal nurse, Akane. Caught off guard by this unexpected situation, Reito faints because he couldn't handle it all at once. Reito had a tough night. He had to share his bed with Akane, his nurse, and Sui, his bodyguard. They were pretty cute and all, but he wasn't into them like that. He only had eyes for Elisa, his long lost love. The next morning, Reito was tired as hell. He wanted to go to the animal lab, where Elisa used to work, hoping to find some clues about her disappearing act. So he went there with Mira, Akani, and Sui. But damn things got messed up when a freaking bear broke free from its cage and attacked them. Reito saved Sui's ass from being mauled, but got hurt in the process. Then some crazy stuff went down. Sui turned into a freaking ninja and kicked that bear's butt. Afterward, she went back to normal mode and apologized to Reito. Reito was mad confused about what just happened, but no time for questions. He headed straight for Elisa's lab, only to find out someone jacked all her research data. He saw this pic of Elisa with her dog Jiro, and memories flooded back about their childhood dream. Both wanted to be doctors so they could cure Jiro's disease. Reito was like, hell yeah. He ain't gonna let no MK virus take him down. He thought it would be much better to find a cure for that shit than wasting his time knocking up random chicks. Reito had this badass idea of going on TV and telling everyone that he was immune to the damn MK virus. He even wanted to wake up all those other dudes who were chilling in their icy sleep so they could join forces and find a cure together. But man, his sister Mahiru wasn't feeling it at all. She straight up thought he was gonna get himself killed by putting himself out there like that. But Reito didn't give a damn, because he wanted more freedom and allies on his side. Oh yeah, he also got some clue about where Elisa might be hiding out. Turns out she left behind this fancy smart ring inside her cute little plushy toy thingy. And guess what? This chick recorded a message just for him. She spilled some tea about how the MK virus wasn't natural, but totally made in a lab or some shit like that. And you know what else she said? She trusted only Reito with this info. Nobody else can be trusted. Damn son, Reito felt hope surging through his veins and curiosity taking over his mind. He found himself strolling alongside Mira, remarking on her striking resemblance to Elisa. He took the opportunity to apologize for his previous rudeness, to which Mira responded with a warm smile, acknowledging his kindness. Mira harbored feelings for Reito, but she was well aware of his love for Elisa. She couldn't help but wonder if she could ever capture his heart. In a moment of vulnerability, she compared herself to Elisa, feeling a pang of insecurity. Meanwhile, at the United Women's headquarters in Japan, directors were discussing Reito's recent announcement. They speculated that the global headquarters might attempt to hinder his quest for a cure. They expressed satisfaction with Kyoji's performance and hinted at the possibility of awakening another man soon. In 2040, a young boy named Shota was tormented by his classmates in the school restroom. They despised him for witnessing their cruel treatment of his only friend, who subsequently distanced himself from Shota out of fear. Shota was filled with anger and loneliness. His music teacher, Yuzu, was the only person who showed him kindness. She consistently encouraged him, assuring him of his intelligence and resilience. However, Shota harbored a secret. He was diagnosed with cellular sclerosis, a condition that could only be treated by cryogenic freezing for five years. Hoping for a better future, he decided to undergo the procedure, unaware that during his slumber, the MK virus would decimate the male population and alter the world drastically. Five years later, Shota was roused from his sleep by a vivacious blonde woman named Karen. She introduced herself as his assistant, promising to infuse his life with fun and excitement. Karen informed Shota that he was to return to school, 
revealing that he was the sole male immune to the virus. Overwhelmed with fear and confusion, Shota followed Karen to his new dorm room. There, he was introduced to his new classmates, all of whom were girls. Unlike his previous classmates who despised him, these girls were friendly and curious about him. This made Shota feel a sense of relief and happiness, believing he could finally enjoy his school life and leave his past behind. He also reunited with his former music teacher, Yuzu, who remained as kind and beautiful as ever. She was equally delighted to see him. Karen suggested that Yuzu should reward Shota for his bravery and strength, causing Yuzu to blush and invite Shota to her room that night. Shota was living the dream. He was attending school with a group of girls who liked him and was dating his music teacher, Yuzu, who was both sweet and attractive. However, unbeknownst to Shota, he was part of a clandestine experiment. He was one of the five men immune to the MK virus that had wiped out most of the male population worldwide. Moreover, Karen, his assistant, was manipulating him to procreate with as many girls as possible. Karen attempted to introduce Shota to the girls in his class and encouraged him to get closer to them. She even had him join gym and swimming classes where he could see the girls in their athletic outfits and swimsuits. Although Shota was shy and nervous, he couldn't help but admire the girls. He took a particular liking to Akira, a sporty girl who played volleyball and felt sympathy for Shifu, a petite girl who tried but failed to impress him. Shota also enjoyed playing the piano in the music room with Yuzu. He felt a deep connection with her and was very much in love with her. Shota believed he was living in a dream, unaware that there were other men like him in the world. Shota found himself missing Yuzu, his music teacher and girlfriend. He longed to see her, but she claimed to be busy. Unsure of what to do, he was taken by surprise when Natsu, a girl from his class, visited him. She announced that she had won a swimming competition and had earned the right to stay in his room for a week. Shota was taken aback and bewildered, but he found himself unable to refuse. The following morning, he awoke beside Natsu, feeling uneasy and anxious. As he prepared for school, Natsu requested a favor of him. Shota's thoughts drifted to Yuzu, wishing she was there with him. After school, he called Yuzu and asked to meet her, but she declined once again. She also suggested that he should interact more with the other girls, as they might become envious if he only paid attention to her. Shota felt a wave of sadness and loneliness wash over him. Returning to his room with Natsu, he attempted to sleep, but found his thoughts consumed by Yuzu and Natsu. Natsu then woke up and asked him for another favor, explaining that she was accustomed to sleeping with someone and couldn't sleep alone. Shota felt sympathy for her once again and allowed her to join him. Then, Natsu confessed something that took him by surprise. She had loved him since the first time she laid eyes on him. She expressed her happiness that the virus had occurred, as it gave her the opportunity to be with him. Reito had become a celebrity. He had appeared on TV and announced to the world that he was a man who was immune to the MK virus. He also expressed his desire to find a cure for the virus and awaken the other men who were in cryosleep. He became an overnight sensation, with a TV show documenting his daily life and interactions with women. Women who wished to bear his children queued outside the mating center every day. Reito felt overwhelmed by all the attention. Mira, his assistant, was concerned about him. She also worried about his sister Mahiru, who spent a lot of time in the refugee area. She hoped that they wouldn't discover that Reito was her brother. The next day, Shota woke up with Natsu, a girl from his class. Natsu was saddened that she had to leave his room in a week. Shota felt sorry for her. He also felt guilty for Yuzu, his music teacher and girlfriend. He went to see her in the music room and tried to apologize, but Yuzu burst into tears and ran away from him. Shota felt a pang of guilt and confusion. He met Karen, his assistant, and expressed his discontent about what they were doing to him and the girls. He accused them of using them as tools for their experiment. Karen interrupted him and escorted him back to the classroom. She announced in front of all the girls that his sole purpose was to procreate with as many girls as possible to save humanity. She stated that all the girls were interested in him and willing to do it. She asserted that he had no choice. Shota was shocked and frightened, unsure of what to do. 
In the heart of Japan, at the United Women's Headquarters, a decision was made to let go of Mira, Reito's assistant. The directors believed she was unsuccessful in persuading Reito to procreate. They felt a change was necessary. Reito, on the other hand, was grappling with his own challenges. He was tirelessly working on a vaccine for the MK virus, but his efforts were fruitless. One day, a woman half-dressed stumbled into his room. She was disoriented and tripped over him. Upon realizing he was a man, she panicked and fled. Reito was left in a state of confusion, only to discover later that Mira had been dismissed. Her position was filled by two women, Rhea and Maria. Rhea was assertive and domineering, promising to cater to his needs, but also threatening to restrict his freedom if he didn't procreate. Maria, on the other hand, was reserved and soft-spoken, offering to assist him with his research. Reito was upset and irate. He had a fondness for Mira and wished for her to remain. He was not fond of Rhea and wished for her departure. Rhea confronted Mira, belittling her and labeling Reito as a man who exploited women. Mira stood up for him and departed. The following day, Reito, along with Maria, Rhea, Akani, and Sui, journeyed to Kaiman City. Maria mentioned they were to meet a significant individual for the MK virus research. Intrigued and eager, Reito wondered if the virus could be synthetic. They lodged at a hot spring resort, savoring the cuisine and the baths. They sought to meet Tanaguchi, a woman whose spouse was the first victim of the virus in Japan. However, she was resentful and harsh, dismissing them. Maria insisted on Tanaguchi's assistance, stating that the virus had simultaneously emerged in various locations, and that Tanaguchi might have information about her husband's actions prior to his illness. Despite their attempts to engage Tanaguchi, she remained uncooperative. She advised Reito to concentrate on procreation rather than finding a cure. Reya revealed that Reito had not yet procreated, which surprised Tanaguchi. She requested everyone to leave except Reito and questioned his lack of interest in women. Reito confessed his love for only one girl, Elisa. After they leave, it turns out that Taniguchi has been in touch with Elisa, who refuses to show herself for some reason. Taniguchi thinks that Elisa and Reito look alike. Meanwhile, at the hotel, Reito is taking a bath when he has to hide in a sauna as some women enter. He doesn't know that male saunas are no longer a thing. In the sauna, he meets Chloe, an American who says she's a transfer student. She flirts with Reito and kisses him, just as the others walk in and get mad at them. Later, Mira talks to Taniguchi about how noble Reito is. She says that Reito is selfish and won't mate with anyone because he loves someone else and wants to save the other men in the world. This persuades Taniguchi to tell her what she knows. But someone sneaks in and poisons her IV tube, putting her in critical condition. Before she loses consciousness, Taniguchi asks them to give Reito a photo of her and her husband. Taniguchi's information is not very useful, so the group decides to visit the abandoned hospital where the first MK virus patients went. But the hospital is empty, and it's obvious that someone has erased any evidence. Reito's group doesn't make much progress and decides to go back. On the other hand, Kyoji is bored of having sex with all the women he can. He goes out with his attendants to pick a random girl from the street. And the one he chooses is Mahiru, of all people. On the day of their return, Reito notices that his scanner reacts to the photo from Taniguchi. He scans the photo and finds incomplete blueprints of the MK virus's design. Someone must have created the virus, and Reito could use the blueprints to try to reverse engineer it. When the group gets back, Kyoji's attendant Neneko tells Reito and Mahiru that Kyoji wants to see them. The siblings are against the idea, and Reito meets with Kyoji to tell him that it won't work. Reito says that his sister is only 16, but Kyoji begs him and says that he loves Mahiru. Reito can't change his mind, so he agrees to set up a lunch date with him, and he goes with them. As expected, the date is a disaster. Mahiru has no interest in Kyoji. That same day, Reito was taking a bath when Akani and Maria joined him. They noticed that he had been acting strange lately and assured him that they were on his side. They also told him that many virologists had gone missing or been killed in the past few years. It seemed like the government was eliminating them to prevent them from finding a cure for the virus. 
The two girls entered the bath so that no one could record their conversation. Nice scene, but not ads friendly. The next day, Reito, Maria, Akani, and Sui set up a base in the refugee area of the city. Maria even managed to create a network of computers that was off the grid from the government's surveillance. They could use it to investigate the MK virus further. The first thing they discovered was that most of the virologists had been admitted to the same abandoned hospital in Kiman City. What a lucky break. Back at the experimental school, Shuta was now shared by everyone. The girls had started to draw lots to decide who would be his new roommate. This time, the winner was Rika Yanagi. But Shuta was not comfortable with bold girls like her yet and did not react well to her moves. In fact, he did not react at all. He just ran away to the teacher's lounge, his secret hiding spot from bullies. Shunka Hiragi, another girl from the school, came there too. She said that she had also been bullied when she was in middle school and that they had something in common. It sounded far-fetched, but Shunka used this to seduce Shuta and it worked. They ended up sleeping together in the lounge. Shuta still felt a bit used after that. He did not expect the girls to fight over him, but he also did not like being a baby-making machine. He called Yuzuki for some advice, but she did not answer his calls. Shuta had everything, but he was still lonely. The following day, the allure persisted. Akita, the one who had struck him with a volleyball, confined him in the locker room and attempted to charm him while expressing remorse. This was highly inappropriate. Amidst this turmoil, Shuta was gradually losing his grip on reality. In the subsequent class, Karen introduced a new system where a girl would be designated as his daily attendant. Their compensation was a kiss from Shuta, as agreed. After an accidental stumble resulted in a minor hand injury for Shuta, he was escorted to the school nurse. Despite receiving the necessary treatment, Karen instructed Ichijo Shunka and Akira to accompany him in his rest. Shuta was now fully immersed in this world of indulgence, and over the next few days, he became increasingly assertive with the girls. One day, Shion, a girl who had previously disregarded him during his bullying ordeal, transferred to the school. She appeared keen to form a bond with Shuta, but he dismissed her just as she had done to him in his time of need. Shuta was irate that she had intruded on his paradise, but Karen explained that Shion had aspired to be an actress. However, due to the MK virus, she could only secure a role if she formed a bond with Shuta. She was at his mercy, and despite his lingering resentment, he humiliated her by making her attend a class in her underwear before forming a bond with her in public. He arranged for a few of his companions to witness as he formed a bond with her on the rooftop in the most awkward position possible. While this was quite harsh for an introvert like Shuta, it sparked another sinister idea in him. Shuta requested Karen to locate someone and bring her to him. Karen complied and brought Erika in chains. A vengeful Shuta forced her to tend to the wounds he had sustained because of her and her boyfriend. Shuta was now fully embracing his dark side, and there was no turning back. Every day, a fresh face becomes part of Shuta's routine. If he doesn't find the current girls appealing, new ones are introduced. It almost seems as if Shuta himself is single-handedly tasked with repopulating the world. However, one of the newly transferred girls raises suspicion. She rejects Shuta's advances, a rarity in itself, and appears to be in contact with Elisa at night. They seem to be plotting to kidnap Shuta. Meanwhile, Reito and his crew decide to revisit the deserted hospital to uncover more information about Elisa and the MK virus. During their exploration, Sui accidentally uncovers an air duct by breaking a wall. They crawl through it and stumble upon an underground lab presumably the birthplace of the virus. Before they can investigate further, they encounter a group of women with a strange intent to harm them. Luckily, the women are neutralized by a group of mercenaries led by Chloe, also known as Miss Mansfield, who is revealed to be a peacekeeping agent of the United Women's Organization. As Chloe rescues the group from the hospital, which was rigged with a time bomb, her assistant, Miss Pope, confronts the Japanese UW Council. She arrests them after deducing that the MK virus was created under their orders. While the dust settles from the hospital explosion, several other blasts occur at the locations where the men are housed. An odd girl at school attempts to kidnap Shouta but fails. However, Elisa and her organization, labeled as terrorists, manage to capture one of the men, number four. 
Shouta, injured in the explosion, awakens in the hospital. Karen explains to him that the terrorists' attempt to kidnap him was unsuccessful. Tired of his daily routine, Shouta questions why Karen doesn't join them. She responds that she would if he desired, but she needs his help to rule the world. Shuta agrees to assist her. Chloe's group assumes control of Japan and instructs Kyoji to cease his activities until the terrorist threat is neutralized. This angers Kyoji, but realistically, what can one man do against a billion women? Elisa and her organization hack into the global television network and reveal that her group, Izanami, is not a terrorist organization, but a group of rebels against the UW. They claim that the world leaders created the virus to eliminate men and create a world solely of women, and Izanami's goal is to rescue the men. The leaders of the UW were in the process of developing a method to create humans without the need for men. The implication was that once this was achieved, all men would be eliminated, which is why the UW needed to be stopped. They demanded that all men, both those in stasis and those awake, be handed over to them. Following the broadcast, Reito's group concluded that Chloe could not be trusted and decided to escape. They hurried to Reito's room to collect some belongings, only to find it already occupied by Shuta, who appeared to have undergone cosmetic surgery, and Karen, who was becoming increasingly difficult to tolerate. A flashback revealed that Karen had performed a procedure on Shuta to make him appear slightly older and eliminate his need for glasses. In other words, Shuta had received a makeover akin to the Kardashians. In the meantime, Reito encountered Mira and encouraged her to flee with them. However, she would only agree if he agreed to mate with her, which he declined. Suddenly, they were arrested by Miss Pope. Their original plan was to transport Reito to Japan, but they were told they would be taken to America instead. However, Rhea and Maria incapacitated Miss Pope, allowing them to escape to Mehiru's refugee friends. Back at the UW headquarters, Shuta and Karen negotiated a deal with Chloe to allow Shuta to continue mating and to appoint Karen as the ruler of Japan. Reito's group then boarded a ship owned by Izanami that was bound for Taiwan. However, Rhea and Mira chose to stay behind and were subsequently arrested. The ship landed and Reito was finally reunited with Elisa. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the series, don't forget to leave a comment and like to support this channel. Love you guys.